Hey guys, and welcome back to the rake. Uh, we are Benless this week. Great news, everyone. We are Ben free. Uh, Ben's <laughs> taking a, a little break. So I am heads up with Jamin Burton this week. Um, if you guys don't know him, he runs a very popular, very well-made blog called The Drawing Dead Vlog. Um, the editing is amazing. And I think I, I say it's my favorite vlog. I've already talked to you off camera about how, you know, maybe I don't have many favorite vlogs. <laughs> But yours is awesome. Um, he has 36,000 subscribers, uh, has made over 200 videos. Seems like a lot of work. Um, yeah. Welcome to the pod. How's it going? Good. It's, it's, going, it's going really, really well. Um, vlogs in my favorite vlog. Well, obviously, besides, besides mine. Um, <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about vlogs. Let's just get right into it. Let's just mm -hmm. get all the stuff in my introduction. They know who the hell I'm at, who I am. Um, <laughs> vlogs um god I, I got so much to say i don't even know like where to start so poker vloggers don't watch vlogs mm -hmm. at all um i don't care what your favorite poker vlogger tells you about they've seen other people's vlogs we're not watching them. <laughs> we're not watching other people's vlogs i think over the last year i might have watched Two Johnny Blyde vlogs, three or four Nimi vlogs, and maybe about the same number of Brads. And uh, anyone else that's not in that list, I've never seen it, most likely. Um, uh, it's fair. I feel like since podcasting, um, it takes a lot for me to watch poker podcasts. I'm like, it has to be someone I'm really good friends with or a topic that I care about so much to sit down and watch like an hour or two of a pod and it does happen like sometimes the perfect storm of like awesome content great guest or whatever comes up and I watch it but why do you think that is do you think it's just because you put so much time into creating your own content that you just want to consume different content um I think there's some of that I think there's uh god I mean we just become um engulfed in poker either we're playing it we're mm -hmm. studying it we're looking at ourselves playing it we're editing ourselves playing it we're answering comments about it. We're, you know, hand histories, Instagram, Twitter. And then it's like, in your free time, you're not going to sit and watch somebody else do the exact same thing. Like, I really don't care how you play Ace Queen. I, I, it's not a thing. And even, even when I do watch other poker vlogs, you never watch the hands yeah. ever. You, you skip over the hands completely. Like, I'm very interested in Nimi going around town, showing Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested in Brad's dry hum humor. I'm like watching Johnny and Olga do their thing. But as far as watching somebody play six, seven suited <laughs> out of position, like I, I don't care. The, the only exception, the only poker content that I will consume from end to end, like I look forward to consuming it from end to end is the software wide broadcast mm -hmm. um, that I do listen to religiously. Like, especially like when I'm walking around town, I listen to that a lot. Um, those oh, and, and the rake podcast. Obviously. And the red, and the red podcast. <laughs> Obviously, the red I mean podcast. that one without saying, but I figured I'd just like say yeah, anyway. That, that one, actually, the red podcast made my Spotify list last year of top oh, thank five you. podcasts that I listened to. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, Berkey and and Soto are, are hilarious, and I, I like their takes. And it gives you like a quick, you know, hours long. This is what's going on in the poker, poker world, and it's not all hands. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to the vlogging sphere in itself is just strange and it's changed a ton. It's changed a ton since when I first started. Mm -hmm. um, it feels, I don't know. Do we want to go down this rabbit hole this early? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, gosh, I want your innermost feelings. And I also think like I, I have some pushback on that is that you know, you're not making content for each other. Like vloggers are not making content for other vloggers. Yeah. You're making content for people who wish they had time to play poker. I'd say like the the viewers that you guys attract are people like if I was still a lawyer, I'd be watching your vlog and be like, oh man, a time lapse of Vegas. Oh, he's walking into the aria like <clears throat> chips and cards. Hell yeah. He's got pocket tens. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you know, like you'd have the people at work who can't wait to see. Poker. So it doesn't, it, it does make sense that you're not going to love hearing two five hand histories it's right. not made for you right right 
And, and in that sense, I'm, I'm somewhat jaded. Do you know what I mean? Like, I remember, all right, let me, I skipped this in the beginning. So let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit. So I, like how I got into this space and how I ended up, ended up here. So um, people that know me probably know a lot of the story, but um, I was living in St. Louis, uh, Missouri, was playing one, two or one, three at like a local casino. And one of my favorite dealers, Priscilla, shout out to Priscilla. Um, she said, Hey, Jamin Trooper's here. And I go, who, what trooper? Like, I'm like looking around, like I'm literally looking for a cop like that walked into the room. <laughs> and she's like, no trooper, the vlogger. And I was like, I have zero clue who you're talking about. Um, she goes, look up the trooper on YouTube, YouTube, you know, trooper poker. And so I looked it up and I saw this guy walking around with the camera, walking around Vegas, talking to the camera and going over like poker hands. And I was like, this is the most ingenious thing I've ever seen watching this guy like sneak a camera into the casino and record his sessions. And I was like, holy shit, like this is amazing. And I sat at the table with him like two tables over and just binged his vlog for like five or six episodes. Um, he got up to go get a drink or coffee or who knows what the hell he was doing. Um, and I went over and I introduced myself and I said, I logged his, you know, liked his vlog and he said, thanks. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I went out the next day. <laughs> I went out the next day with my little cheapy camera, took my daughter uh, to Toys R Us when that was still around and tried to vlog it. <laughs> I, wanted to, I was like, this can't be that hard. Like, there's no way that this is that hard. I tried to vlog it and um, it has to be top 10 worst vlogs ever created. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes it's landscape. Sometimes it's portrait. Mm -hmm. Like the sound is weird. Hold on a second. Um, the lighting's horrible. Like there's no story. It's, it's the worst thing ever. And then from that point forward, I was like, you know what? I want to get good at vlogging like mm -hmm. the trooper. Like I want to be like the trooper. So I've always been a journaler. I've always, always, always since maybe seventh or eighth grade, I have journals, handwritten journals going back that far. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, this will be a good way for me to journal my progress through poker. Um, and so I just started it. I created like five or six of them uh, before I got the nerve up to release one publicly. And that was the first one I released, I think, was day one of the World Series of Poker 2017. Maybe I just landed in Vegas. I was staying at Bally's. It was hot as hell. Mm -hmm. And I decided to release a blog. And then I did daily vlogs for like. You're one of the, the OGs then. Yeah. Well, really? I, yeah. Like I guess, you're a year yeah. ahead of some of these. You know, I feel like a lot of people started doing it two years ago or so. Yeah. It was at the time it was Trooper was all I really knew. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't bumped into or discovered um, the greatness of Andrew Nimi, mm -hmm. Brad, um, Johnny Vibes. And I started right around the same time. I want to say he even started like two or three weeks after I did. So, and that was it. It was just like us four. Um, and there was a crazy appetite for it. Like I remember I released my first video. The only subscribers I had to my channel were just friends of mine, you know, mm -hmm. like um, that I had showed, you know, some of my early vlogs. And I released my first video and within a day, I had like a thousand subscribers. And like the next day it was like another 2000. Like it was just, it was nuts. Um, and the, by the third day, I was getting recognized at the Rio, um, which was very strange. And it's still very strange. I still think it's strange. Um, but it's cool that people have been like on this journey with me and they've followed and they've kind of mm -hmm. seen my daughter grow up a little bit. And um, they've seen me move from St. Louis to Vegas. And like that whole thing has just been spectacular. Um, that's the good side of <laughs> like blogging the friendships I've made with like those other four trooper, mm -hmm. Johnny, Brad, um, Marley. Um, but then but there's you like, also mentioned like getting recognized. That's a double edged sword though, too. Uh, me and you have talked a little bit about this off camera about yeah. how, you know, you have to be in a certain mood if you are going to get recognized and people yeah. are going to chat you up and like, sometimes you're not in that mood. And then what, you just don't go make money <laughs> that day. You don't go play poker. Cause you don't want to you yeah. want to be an asshole who says like, oh, I don't feel like talking to anyone today and you have your headphones on. Like, yeah. what do you do in those moments? Well, I mean, like I'm a complete person, you know, like I have good moods. I have bad moods. Sometimes I want to be funny. Sometimes I just 
want to sit there and say nothing and be a nobody and just be a fly on the wall and, you know, like listen to music and you know, play some hands. And um, back before the blog, poker in that way was sort of a release. Do you know what I mean? Like I could escape like work. I could just go chill out. Um, it was fun. I was talking to somebody uh, the other day. Do you remember back in the days when you'd walk to the casino and you'd get there and you'd walk super fast, like to get to the poker room? Like it was fun <laughs> and exciting. Yeah. Um, post vlog, you lose a little bit of that. Um, because if you're not in the best mood, it, like you feel like you have to be on, uh, you don't want to be an asshole, even though sometimes I am an asshole. Like I said, I'm a complete person. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there have been times where I kind of have felt like going to play, but no, I don't feel like being on. So I just stay home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sorry, that's so funny. Colin, uh, our video editor, was just like, are you recording today? I was like, actually, <laughs> <laughs> right this moment. Um, yeah, I actually had a, a weird kind of moment like that. Um, it was when people on Twitter were talking about radical honesty a lot. And I was like, oh, radical yeah. honesty. This is cool. Yeah. I want people to tell me hateful things. Sure. Anyone yeah. who wants to tell me something, go ahead. I like opened my DMs for it. And um, one of them was, it was someone who had played with me um, who had like an anonymous Twitter screen name. And they just said, I thought you were going to be really cool and like really friendly. And you just didn't say anything and you weren't funny. And you just like, <laughs> didn't talk and you had your headphones and they went on and on and on about yeah. like how personality less I was. And I was like, dude, I'm sorry, man. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I like had a bad taco for dinner. Yeah. Like maybe I'm down three buy-ins. Maybe yeah. my dog is sick. Like there's so many things like that where I'm like, man, that is, I didn't know that that was the expectation that someone that you see making a podcast or like trying to be Twitter funny right. or something like that, that people just extrapolate that to being your whole personality. You're always going to be like that. And I'm like, right. the guy who's like, Oh, you're not that funny. I'm like, yeah, dude, I tweet like once a week. If I talked once a week, I'd be fucking hilarious. The <laughs> one time I talked, yeah. um, that is a weird thing to deal with. And it's why I think that like, I would never want to be famous. Like yeah. it, it yeah. would really be a weird thing for have to, to not know what people's expectations are of you, but to know that they exist. Like when you meet someone, they're like, Ooh, this person's going to be like this. And you're like, I don't know, maybe sometimes you don't have anything fun to say, or you're like losing. Whatever. And, it's, and it's even weirder because you don't know what they know, right? Like, yeah. like most of the time, nine times out of 10, I am exactly who you see on the blog. I am joking around. I'm goofy. I'm funny, blah, 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 blah. Like I don't take life too serious, but that one time, maybe I'm pissed off about something. You know what I'm saying? And you don't know you're sitting around the table with seven or eight other strangers. You don't know who is a subscriber, who watches your blog, who hates you, who you, like, you don't know. It's not like I'm, you know, Dwayne Johnson, where I could just assume yeah, everybody everyone knows. Knows. Like, knows. Exactly. So like, you don't know who you're letting down. Like there's right. some guy who's like excited to play with you and you're letting him down. You don't even know. And you're not right. so full of yourself. That you're like, everyone here knows me. Just want to let you guys know I'm having a bad day. I'm not going to. And they're like, who are you? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before, though, too. You oh, ever really? done the thing where you assume somebody does know who you know you and like your ego's too big. And then oh. like, I've never seen, I have no clue. <laughs> Yeah, lucky for me, I have a bunch of friends who are assholes who will just be like, you're not that cool. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, my yeah, family, yeah. especially. It's like anytime I'm like thinking I'm something, they're just like, nah. <laughs> and then just like, you know, just like everybody else, like I'm a work in progress. Like mm -hmm. I don't, I try to work on thing, con things constantly, not just like poker games, but like me as a person, like I'm a work in progress. There was years ago, like if you would have met me, I tell people all the time, like if you would have met me, 10 years ago, nine years, I was an asshole. Like, you know, I was an, an asshole, manipulative. Like I was just not the person that I am now. And it's just like, I'm constantly trying to better myself. Um, uh, like I was just on the phone talking to someone. And I said, you know what I'm really working on right now is not, this is, you're going to think this is funny if you do this. I said, I'm really working on not ending text messages with lol oh to, my god i'm so bad at that in the blow. like no i'm just gonna let my words stay in there and if they fucking sting they sting like you know you know what i'm saying like you say I something ruined so many jokes like that jamin yeah. it's so bad i'll write a joke where it's like uh, not even a joke but i'll be kidding around with someone and it's so obvious mm -hmm. it's not hurtful i'm joking and the person won't respond and then i'll be like 
LOL. <laughs> just kidding. Whatever. I'm like, like I'm like, I'm right. a mean person and they're going to think, wow, what a bitch. Um, and I feel like it ruins a lot of jokes. Yeah. I do it a lot. It's, it's I do. I do it a lot too. <laughs> like I, I try to mitigate a lot of, um, one of my personality quirks or negative pieces of parts of my personality is I try to mitigate a lot of serious situations with laughter. Mm -hmm. Um, and I need to stop. Like, I just need to let things be how they are. So like I said, I'm just, I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm changing. Um, how much of that is from the vlog? Cause it, I would think creating any kind of content is going to make you more introspective. You have to yeah. like plan things you want to talk about. Um, sometimes like even just right now, I'm like, I'm looking at myself in normal life. I don't care. <laughs> like in normal life, if I'm out playing poker or something like that. And I'm not trying to make a vlog or a pod or whatever that I'm not thinking about how I look. Right. Zoom life for a year has made me think about it more. It kind of sucks. Um, but it also, it makes you think about like every aspect of your life. It makes you focus on yourself a little bit more and probably make you more introspective. Do you think right. that had an effect on you wanting to be less of an asshole or like thinking about how you treat others or anything? I think, uh, Ooh, that's a really good question. I think that's, that's some of it. Um, watching hours and hours of footage of yourself, um, I discovered a couple things. Mm -hmm. uh, and people point, people like friends of mine pointed out other things to me. Like they pointed out that little things, like my voice is different when the camera's on. Um, my mannerisms are slightly different when the camera's on, which was just telling me that, oh, I'm really not as comfortable in front of the camera mm -hmm. as I think I am. Um, I've always been very cognizant to try to live in whatever truth I'm in right now, right? That's one of the, like, the more recent um, incarnations of me. Cause I, I wasn't always like that. Like I used to have like a bunch of insecurities and I'd, you know, try to hide things and mask things. No, like now I try to live in the truth. And if that truth is, yeah, this is how I played five, seven suited, you know, <laughs> called a cold four bet from early position. That's just what happened. Like, I'm not going to make up some excuse. Like, no, I just play that badly. Um, so that caused me to do a lot of introspection to kind to, to dig into, um, I don't want to say like dig deeper into myself and like, but it did. I mean, it, 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 caused me to learn how to be more comfortable with who I am. Be um, more honest with yourself. It's like, you know, you're not reporting it to a backer that you played a hand poorly. You're just right. accepting it yourself. You're like, right. I'm going to make a video with this hand where I played like shit. And people in the comments are going to tell me I played like shit. Yeah. And <laughs> Does I think, that get uh, you at all? Yeah, no, that the, the comment comments, bad comments, it, none of that's ever bothered me. Like, um, some, uh, uh, one of, uh, Brad's friends, a, a guy, check race, Charles, who I've never met, but I know he's another vlogger. Seems like a cool guy found a picture that he took of me in like 2013, way before I started blogging, we were playing, must've been playing at the Venetian. He took a picture of me. Um, and he's like, this guy at my table has to be like, I think it said something like has to be one of the biggest badasses ever. Cause I'm sitting there, I'm a big guy and I had a Justin Bieber shirt on. Like I've always, <laughs> always been like staying, I've always stayed in Justin Bieber. Right. So this isn't like a stick for the vlog. Like I really like Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always been comfortable in that way. Like I don't have the embarrassment gene that some people have, mm -hmm. which enables me to vlog like walking through a crowded room with a camera like I don't care oh I would hate that yeah I, like I, you I saw would... me do it this weekend yeah but yeah. I was saying to my friend too when I was talking about meeting you that you aren't annoying with it like there are people who will like oh you guys are having fun can you do that again like that kind of thing, you know or they're like hey can you guys do like do something for me and they're like kind of directing people yeah. and it like it interrupts whatever yeah, it interrupts naturally was thing. happening I didn't even see when you were doing it yeah. you know yeah. you're kind of just like in the corner like oh they're saying funny shit or yeah. whatever uh, I feel like that is like such a better way of getting good content and yeah. without disrupting what's naturally happening. And I feel like at a table, if you can kind of be like somewhat behind the scenes, not obvious, you're going to get right. more real content and not people who are trying to like show off for you or something. Right. And the other thing is my big drive uh, for the vlog, especially now, once I started getting into it a little bit more was never views. It was never sponsorships. It was never fame or wanting people to like me 
or, mm-hmm. or any of that stuff. Um, like I said, I'm a journaler. So, and I have a daughter who's now 11. And mm-hmm. I always thought, man, it would be cool if I could see video of my father when he was my age, like when him and his boys went out, like in the 80s, like what did they do? Yeah. Like what happened when dad left the house? Like, <laughs> and so there's a portion of the blog that is, I want to be able to give this to her. Like, so when I'm old or when I'm gone, you know, like she can be like, oh, this is what my dad did when he went to Vegas for the summer or and it you know, like that kind of thing. context to put you in other than just her dad it's like you have a full life you have like your relationships and friendships and jobs and aspirations where I think sometimes kids growing up when the parent is just an authority figure they're like oh he's a dad (laughs) like you don't really go further than that and be like how does he spend the like 16 hours a day where I'm not like you know that that is pretty cool to give her just like little snapshots of your life along the way and I take a lot of pride in that this little these little snapshots that I create these little 15 to 30 minute views into one random night in my life that I've created it the entire thing from selecting the music to the video, to the editing, to like all of it. Like it was never made and packaged to please others. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like, and I'm not saying it's wrong. Why it's unique too though. It's why your, your vlog is unique and it's like very watchable. It's, it has a lot of components that are really cool and very stylized. And you right. have like the animated portion, which makes it different from every other vlog. And yeah. then um, the stuff that I like that is is not unique to just your vlog. I really like when it's like time lapse of places you are. It just sets the scene for you without yeah. having to speak at all. And it also like creates a lot of excitement for the people who are like dying to be poker players. They're like, right. oh man, this is how the day starts. Oh, we're walking to the casino. <laughs> Holy shit. Like that build up is cool. And like right. having been a working stiff, I'm like, I know what it feels like to not be able to play as much poker as you want to play. And I feel like you guys fill the gap there for a lot of people who like can't play every single day and who look forward to being a weekend warrior at the table. Right. And um, I'm still a working stiff. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm talking to you on a monitor here and on the monitor right here is like code. Like I'm still like a working stiff. I still have a job, um, a job job. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, yeah, I think for a lot of people, um, not to like toot my own horn or whatever, but I am living a dream, but a dream that is more obtainable than doing what, a Brad or a Nini or a Johnny's doing where they don't have a normal quote unquote normal nine to five and they have everything in, into poker. Like people don't see a route to there. They don't see a route from their desk job management position to just, yeah. I'm just, I'm going to play poker full time. And like, you know, so like, I'm like a happy medium. Mm-hmm. We interrupt this podcast with a message from our sponsors at run it once. On Monday, May 24th, we are introducing Top Up Hours at Run It Once Poker. During Top Up Hours, players will earn an extra 25% direct rakeback on all of their play for four hours of every day. To take advantage of this offer, simply hit the tables, cash games, or SNGs between the hours of 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. UTC. For full details, head to once.run slash top up. That's once.run slash T O P U P. And as always, if you're looking to improve your game, head on over to Run at Once Training, where you'll find the largest library of high quality poker training content on the web. Created by a massive stable of some of the greatest minds in the game, including Run at Once founder Phil Galfon. Sign up today at once.run slash learn and you'll get free access to three elite videos from Phil and fellow high stakes legends, Jason Kuhn and Ben Sulsky. That's once.run slash L-E-A-R-N. And now let's get back to the pod. Does having a daughter factor into you never just like taking the full plunge? Like if you're just a single dude, and you're making these vlogs. Do, do you just quit your job one day and go like, screw it, I'm playing poker? No. No, no. I'm, I'm like an old school nerd, Jamie. Like I've, I've started programming computers when I was like eight years old. Mm. And I still wake up in the morning and it still like gets my juices flowing. I still have a passion around learning new languages and digging deep into nerd speak and, you know, 
around, I still have a passion around math and, you know, stuff like that. So even if I didn't have her, um, no, I see, I, you know, you know, like full time, full time pros and the stress they go through and that anxiety and that, like, I just, especially being like a two, five, five, 10 grinder. Mm-hmm. Oof. Like I, yeah, I no, no. I've lived that funny. life. I, I enjoy doing a lot of different things now because it takes a little pressure off yeah. and it wasn't the financial pressure as much as just feeling like I wasn't grinding enough. Yeah. Like there would just be a thing where I'm like, Oh, I didn't play in a couple of days. I really should go play instead of when you are kind of busy and you're doing other stuff, you play when you want to play and yeah. and like without feeling the pressure of, I need to be playing. Yeah. Um, it's just so much nicer. Cause it's like, when I sit down, I'm, I'm patient. I'm there cause I want to be. And that's a really nice luxury to have where when I was completely full-time mm-hmm. cash player, like every day, there would be times where I would play from like 11 PM till six in the morning. It's so like, Oh, my hourly is like 25% higher. If I play these hours, like I was right. like nerdy like that, yeah. but that really affects your life and the friendships that you could have. And like how present you are for other people when you're a zombie certain days, yeah. um, it is the nuts to just have other income and, and then try to win more money in poker. Right. And I don't know. I feel like there used to be some kind of stigma around. It. I feel like Marley and I had discussed this where like seven or eight years ago, maybe people would be like, do you just play poker or, or do you have another sure. job? As if like, if you have some other income, it's like, Oh, she couldn't make it as a real make it, yeah, right, right, yeah, right. And I don't think like that anymore. I think a lot of people realize that like, there is a better way to live a poker life where it's not completely grinding in a casino all day or grinding online all day. A lot of people choose that. And some people who are super successful, huge hourly rates, everything still choose to do other things because it like lights up a different part of their brain or like they want to be creative or something like that. And I got that from, I actually learned that from, from Bart, my buddy, Bart, uh, Bart Hanson, like, mm-hmm. cause I was on that other side where I thought people that didn't just play, didn't just play because they weren't good enough or they couldn't make it. And then he was like, no, Jamin, like you <laughs> have the best of both worlds. Like you can play when you want mm-hmm. and you're good enough to have that in your back pocket if you need to do that. But you have another income coming in. Like you don't, he goes, Jamie, you've never had to worry about like bankroll management. Yeah. <laughs> and is this game too big? And he's right. I never, I've never worried. I've never thought about it at all. Like if I had my druthers and just wanted to go sit into in a 25, 50 game for some reason, I just go sit in it. Like I'm not concerned yeah. about, oh, my bankroll says I can't. Like, I'll just go do it. Um, I'm not that dumb, but I'm not that, <laughs> I'm not that good either. Uh, but I could if I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So about your like side hustle, I really don't know how much money can be made blogging and stuff like that. You don't need to get into it if you don't want to, but I had some Uh, specific questions. Like your editing is so good. And I want to know as someone who is bad at computers, you've answered a little bit. Like if you've been into coding and stuff since you're eight, you probably really love computers and technology and all this stuff. Um, Do you do your editing yourself and are you self-taught? And like, how has that process been from, from making your terrible Toys R Us blog, you said it was the worst (laughs) of all time to the vlogs that you make now? I you deep dive, Jamie. So what? All right. So even though I was like an editor, or even though I was a, a coder, I'm a coder and I write code or whatever, that didn't translate to editing and creative and sound mixing or any of that stuff at all. So when um, I first, first, when I figured out how to upload video from my phone to my computer, which was a whole other thing, like that took a half a day just to figure mm-hmm. that out. Um I opened it up in iMovie and I was completely lost. So the first step was like, go to YouTube, mm-hmm. how to edit video, you know, and then watch some video on that and then play around and then finally move from iMovie to Final Cut Pro and do the same thing. How do I make a words on the screen, you know, um, <clears throat> and then just hours and hours and hours of like trial and error. And for me, this is like the super nerd part of me. For me, that's the exciting part. The exciting part is having uh, like a vision of the footage. Like you have the footage. you So you have all your content, but then you have to make it into a story, right? Mm-hmm. And then taking that video and making it into a story and then shrinking hours. Like normally when I, when I film, um, when I decide, oh, I'm going to play poker tonight and I'm going to blog, I walk away from that night with two, three hours worth of footage. And I have to shrink that down into something like 15, 20 minutes. So that's the exciting part for me. 
Yeah. So I, I have only like a shred of understanding of this because I was a person who like never really took pictures. I only had pictures when like I was out with girls that were like pictures. And I was like, <laughs> okay, whatever. I'm like, sure. Like a lot of the time I just be like, I'm having a good time. I'm not thinking about it. Right. And I didn't really want to pause it to take pictures or anything. But then the next day when I was with someone who was like a picture person, I was so happy when right. they'd send me something I'm like, oh, that was really fun. Great. Thank you. Um, and it's like you have a souvenir from the night. And so I kind of understand wanting to document certain things. But is that part of it is like you get done with your session, you come home and you just have like a treasure trove of stuff. You're like, yes. "Ooh, that hand was really cool. Or like I met this person and they made a funny joke on my vlog. I'm going to definitely get that. Yes. Um, is it fun to go through or are you like coming home with three hours of stuff and you're like, oh, shit. Uh, normally I'm coming home with three hours of stuff and I'm like, oh shit, like how am I going to edit all of this? And not because it's not like I come home and then I start editing the next day. Like for instance, the vlog I'm editing right now today is May 18th. The vlog sure. I'm editing right now is from, it's like April 26th. So oh, you're a procrastinator. Yeah. So it's like, I'm back <laughs> up. I got to go through these notes. Like so when I'm vlogging, you got to take notes at the table because I'm not going to remember all the hands. So, but the the benefit is I can go back right now and pull up a video from, like I said, like day one of World Series 2017 and walk through that day and almost like relive it. Like, remember, oh, this is when we went here and this is where we went there. Or like, for instance, I, I did this the other day. Um, I didn't know I was going to see you this weekend. But I just happened to pull up a blog from where I met you, which was Run It Up Reno. I love like, Run It Up Reno. Yeah. <laughs> Run It Up Reno is the best. Yep. <laughs> Run It Up Anything is the best, but Run It Up Reno especially. Um, but it was like, we were all out. You were there. Marley was there. Um, Jesse was there. Um, I just, her name. Ashley. It was when Ashley, Ashley. won. Ashley yeah. won. Ashley Sleep. One yeah. of my good friends, uh, one, it was like the Thursday thriller or like one of the fun events that were like, she won a pretty decent amount, like 30 yeah. or something like that, but she get, got that like comically large trophy and we yeah. filled it. Katie Lindsay was there. Katie Lindsay put God knows what in there, <laughs> just horrible alcohol. Yeah. should never be mixed. And Ashley's drinking it and we almost killed her on the night she won yeah. the tournament. But and I yeah, you were there. That on video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have all that. And I can like remember that entire day and playing cash and playing the tournament. That's the part that of the vlog that I like. So mm -hmm. when, People give me feedback on my blog. Oftentimes it's, oh, you need more hands. You need to do more hands. Hands, do do like what Brad does. And, Ooh, just hands. Hands. and I'm like, no, <laughs> like, that's not what I want to do. Like, yeah. I'm not going to go back and look at the hands I played at Run It Up Reno. Like, I don't care about the hands. Like, mm -hmm. I want the whole experience you know what I'm saying so it's valuable to the people you're with too because like I was saying I'm like I don't want to be the person taking the pictures but I really I am very appreciative when someone right. sends me a picture from a, a time I had a lot of fun right. especially the way you do it because it's like not invasive you're just like right. documenting a fun event and then like I've I've watched a couple of your vlogs and I'm just like oh shit I didn't even know you were taking a video here or whatever <laughs> I'm like that is really cool that yeah you're giving people like such value and they're going to look back on it too. Like people who are too lazy, like me to take my own <laughs> videos. Um, maybe in 20 years, I have a job that's stressful or something, or, or I'm completely out of poker and like, it'll make me really happy to be like, wow, that weird decade of my life. Like, here we go. Yeah. Here's a video of this crazy night. Um, I think it's really good for people. And it's cool that other people who are thinking about playing poker, who maybe don't have the time to play poker, get a window into some of the weird stuff that we do. Like Run It Up Reno is a perfect example. Right. A lot of people can't take a week off and go to Reno in the middle of nowhere for most people, you know, like right. who, who have jobs in the East and West Coast. Um, but watching Run It Up Reno, it's, it's an event where like, it's the most unique poker event where you get people like random survivor players show up. Um, there's a karaoke night. There's stand up comedy. There's things that like you wouldn't, you know, really put poker with. You wouldn't <laughs> think of. Um, and just the, the people who show up are just like the most, I don't know, a wide it's range the, of, the of human beings. Thing. Like it is. Uh, and this extends, extends to the blog sphere as the sphere of bloggers as well. And I think people can pick up with this, pick up on this is that we're all different. Like what I do is different than what Trooper does or what different than what Brad does and blah, blah, blah. And so it's a different taste for all the viewers, right? For all the subscribers, everybody uh, that watches. But we all collaborate. We all come together, even though we are in a discipline that is very individualistic and if you put me on a table with you, I'm going to try to murder, murder you. 
Like there's no soft playing going on. Like, do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. it's, but then after the game, we all hang out. We all, it's, it's, it's just a very interesting um, dynamic of um, competitiveness, but collaboration all at the same time. Like, and, and it's, it's, it's invaluable. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, so I want to ask you, and I was trying not to put you on the spot. So I gave you a little heads up. Maybe you'll have thought oh, of right yeah, now. Give me heads up. Okay. All right. Okay, all right. So- I'm ready. Funniest or weirdest encounter with a fan or a hater while filming? And a little bit of backstory for this is that I played with Nimi. Uh, it was in Reno at Peppermill. And you could just see people kind of trying to get on the vlog. And yeah. they were doing like lots of weird shit trying to get on the vlog. And I'm like, Nimi, how do you play poker when like you don't know who's trying to get on the vlog, who doesn't care? You don't know when someone's going out of their way to try to bluff you and like slam down the seven high to be like, got him. I hope that makes the vlog. Like how how does this work? And have there been any like super out of line or like funny moments? Because um, of- yeah, there's been not super out of line. There's been creepy stalker moments, which I think <laughs> everybody gets. Um, there's been um, <laughs> I've had people offer to pay me to get on the blog, which I think is weird. That's pretty um, weird. <laughs> yeah, uh, people offer like normally in my blog, I do some hands and then I do like a mid session update where I take the camera and I walk outside and I talk about the first part of the session and then I come back in. I've had people um, wanting to be in that so much so that they followed me out of the casino. Um, I've had that. Then I get the normal stuff where it's like, you know, somebody's just trying to angle or trying to not angle, like angle, like angle shoot, but just like Mm -hmm. trying to position themselves. So they're in the blog or Mm -hmm. or something. Uh, I can normally spot that pretty quickly. Um, I've never had anything, you know, contrary to, to what, well, I don't even know if this is contrary to popular belief, but there aren't women poker groupie blogger groupies like that. They, that, that doesn't exist. I it can't doesn't. believe it. I mean, it's yeah. just so cool. I can't believe I'm talking to you right now. I was going to ask you digits <laughs> after this. Like I was yeah. like, oh my God, poker <laughs> there's, blogger. There's no women poker groupies. <laughs> um, but there are male poker groupies that, that <laughs> okay. um, and I'm sure you've gotten this too, where someone will send you a DM and you'll respond and then they'll instantly re-respond. And then you're locked into like a conversation with them that they won't let in. Um, I get, you you get that a lot. Uh, I have, but then like, it's all right. So I have some strap for that, um, (laughs) which is to be really slow responding. And then you kind of dictate that it's like, yes. this is not going to be a daily thing. Yeah. We're like not pen pals. Like, we haven't made <laughs> right. a point. But sometimes you do like, I, I am afraid of conversations like that for what mm-hmm. you're, for the reasons you're saying, but right. like, I have made friends like that where I'm like, Ooh, I don't really want to respond to this. And it's like, okay, a few days later I respond to it. And right. then it turns out to be really fucking cool. And right. you're like, okay, like some people can get through, but I know exactly what you're talking about. And <laughs> I hope I've never done that to anyone. <laughs> Cause I'm like pretty friendly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very cognizant. Like I don't want to do it to anybody. But. Yeah, because it's just like you don't know what kind of time people have. Like they might not have any time. They might have five seconds of messaging you back of time. Right. That and that's it. And maybe they have kids and and all the stuff to worry about. Right. Um, but yeah, that's my strat is just to you can kind of dictate the timetable and which messages are sent and received. <laughs> and it's like there's the other part where it's like two days I know I'm not yeah, like I know I'm not shit. Like I'm nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like you still have only a limited amount of time. It doesn't yeah, matter. It's not right. an ego thing. I swear. Like right. that. It, it's not a thing where it's like, no, I think I'm better than this person. It's just like, no, you have a limited amount of time, right. and you have your own friends and family, and you maybe want to study or make vlogs or whatever. Um, and you know, random strangers don't get your time yes. for no reason. So it's yes. like it's okay. Like that. That's yeah. something Doug had talked about that a lot too. I was like making videos with Doug Polk. And every once in a while, he would say something about like, oh, man, like, I feel bad when I don't respond to messages. And I was like, I get it. Like, yeah, you're you would like to have time to say Mm -hmm. something back to everyone who's Mm -hmm. nice to you or whatever. But also, like, if you're creating content, a lot of people are probably hitting you up. Yeah. You can't give every single person 10 minute response. Right. 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 And I I, like Doug. I feel bad. Like I, I, I still I'm still getting over that. In fact, I, like I said, I just had another conversation, the same conversation I had about in not ending sentences with LOL. I had a conversation <laughs> about the like trauma that I have over not responding to messages. Like I legit feel bad that someone has taken their time to leave a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. And I've either missed it or I can't even like say, oh, thanks. Like 
but if I do that to every message, it just, it, it, I would have time for nothing else. Yeah. Uh-huh. And if you're ever actually feeling bad, you can just like, I'll send you a couple of ones that went really poorly for me. <laughs> <laughs> there have been one or two where I'm like, oh, this person seems totally fine and normal. And then it turns some weird direction. You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but oh, like, like over, overall, this entire experience, I mean, um, I didn't create, like I said, I didn't create blogs to like be known or mm-hmm. to have followers. Or like it wasn't anything like that. In fact, that um, approach to poker blogging wasn't even a thing. No one did that. Like mm-hmm. no one had followers. No one like now it's a little different. Now, you know, people do set out to like get clout or something in that yeah. sort of way, which or or advertise themselves in some way. Like they want to yes. be a coach or they want to like get a sponsorship or something right. like that. And I'm not knocking anybody's hustle. Like, if that's what we want to do, like, that's just not what, it's not me. That's not what I did. Um, but when, again, when I talk about, when I was referring to the bad side of poker vlogging, I see a lot more that mm-hmm. um, than I did uh, earlier, like years ago. Like, I personally um, know of vloggers, none of the ones that I've named, mm-hmm. but I personally know of vloggers that, have made up boards, like shown their hands and like made like just no integrity, just no, just mm-hmm. like, like, why? Like, why are you doing like it just and it's like those kind of people I just, you know, I don't just get get the fuck away from me. Yeah. Um, but uh I just I don't get that mentality or what they get out of that, besides they want to be some sort of famous or they want some sort mm-hmm. of clout or um, and so that kind of leaves us a, a bad taste in my mouth sometimes too. Um, but again, full disclosure, no, none of the people I named earlier mm-hmm. have done anything like that. Um, so I have a very important question that I'd like to end Dudes. on. Though. Uh, you have to fight someone in poker for your vlog. Who are you fighting? Physically? Yeah. Uh, There's gotta be someone. See, you're somebody who like tells the fight? truth. Like what? Do we want it to be like a good, like a, like a good fight or like just somebody I can beat? There's Someone a, you want to beat up. Poker, like, like I whip their ass. Yeah, I feel like the COVID year had a lot of weird things happen in poker. Um, one of them was like everyone wants to play each other heads up for rolls. Like every <laughs> person is just super angry and wants to spew money. Um, and another thing though is that like people just keep talking about these MMA fights, like who they want to fight in poker. And I just want to know: is there someone who's asked you want to kick, or or the more sporting way, someone you think would be a good fight? I guess. Uh, someone I think would be a good fight. That's tough because I'm not. You know, I'm a big boy. Like I mean, I'm. <laughs> I'm six two two fifty of like uh-huh. you know, uh, a good fight for me would be <laughs> wow that's a good one. I mean, there's people I could name, but there's like no like they like I'm trying to name somebody that people would know. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, it won't be that compelling if you're like my neighbor Tom. Like, thanks. <laughs> I think Ivy would be a good fight. Ivy's a big guy too. Yeah. Like Ivy's bigger than people think he is. Yeah. I've heard he's Zen now though. People oh. have been saying that he's like, he's meditating and he's yeah, like, okay. So maybe he wouldn't even be able to like punch you or something. Um, I'd fight Brad. Brad's, Brad'd be a good fight. Oh my God. That'd be an amazing vlog. Do you yeah. think that's like a 2 million view kind of yeah, vlog? Brad, I, I mean, I love Brad. Come on. But, but Brad's taller than me. He's got reach. Yeah. He's got reach. That's about it. I feel like you might kill him. No, I don't know, Brad. I think Brad could get would get dirty. Right. I think Brad would probably bite. I'm gonna propose yeah. this. We'll have it sponsored by like I don't know. Wait, run it once. <laughs> yeah, <Be> good. <laughs> Let's bring that up. <laughs> um, uh, Christian would be a good fight. He's spicy. Oh wow, Christian. that is a good idea. Yeah, Christian would be a good fight. He's thrown yeah. hands in the past. You can tell. Yeah. Like so, yeah, yeah. He looks like someone who might fight kind of dirty though. Yeah. Yeah, Christian oh, no. Christian gets down. He's he's not, you know, he's no he's not a clown. He's not a slouch. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a good fight. Yeah. All right, cool. We gotta make it happen. I'm tired of the heads up for rolls. Like it's happening all over the place. There's like heads up. Now there's all these heads up tournaments and everything too. Um, but like, you know, there's not enough fist. I, well, I, I think the public's demanding those because they think they prove something. You know what I mean? Like, but the yeah. sample is never gonna be big enough 
to like to prove anything like it's but it feels like it's proving something that you beat somebody for 25,000 hands like that's, that's I mean nothing. that's that was quite the sample I feel like a lot of them though like on poker go right now it's just yeah. like you're gonna play 200 hands or something yeah. and then talk about it a lot yeah I just don't <laughs> heads up to me it would be more interesting almost if it was uh three ways than just heads up but neither one of them like really moved mm-hmm. me probably because I suck at both you know, I do too. I've had a comment commentate heads up and I'm just like, hmm. I'm like, look at that guy's shirt. That's a nice shirt. That's like, right, yeah, I'm like anything except for the actual action. Um, yeah, it's tough. I, there are very few people who actually like specialize in it too. And the ones who do just don't want to commentate because they're like, I'm not teaching you idiots. Like I'm going right, to beat your heads up in tournaments. I'm not going to teach. And I think that. Berkey made a good point in one of his pod, uh, one of the broadcasts where he was talking about the people that are really, really good at heads up. Like the public doesn't want to watch that. They wouldn't understand what's going on. It's so mm. high level that you like the average person wouldn't understand it. So there's no market for it. So what there's market for is people that have names. Yeah. TV poker pros of the early and high stakes. Like it's like if the money's enough and the names are big enough, but right. I do want to watch good players play though. It's like the, don't we ever make the poker players happy? It's like, we're still catering to people who like in 2006, were like, I love poker. I'm like, well, right. well, what about people who are interested in getting better and want to see good players play? Yeah. And, you know, uh, like we kind of get ignored sometimes just for the big name, like loud banter kind of people. Well, and I think it's harder now with, especially without the TV sponsorships and the full tilts and the poker, you know, mm-hmm. the, the poker stars, it's even harder to make a name now like for sure we don't do like documentaries on these people the production company that used to uh combine with i forget what it was called me 411 something like that productions but um that used to combine with espn for all the coverage Mm -hmm. um they were documentarians so that's Mm -hmm. the view that that's the lens they were looking at poker players from they'd be like i want to know what got you here i want to know about your hometown I want to know, oh, does your mom like that you play poker or like, what's your situation? All those questions and stuff that used to make you root for people or against them. They'd make heroes and villains like very easily by giving you a lot of backstory. Um, They don't really exist anymore. And so the big names are the ones that we created 15 years ago. And it's like, I I don't quite understand. That's how you get people into poker. You, You tell backstories and you get people interested, even if they don't understand what's going on in the flop, they'll know whether they like you or not and they want you to win. I remember, I don't, I, I was still in St. Louis in my basement someplace, but watching, they did one of those little uh, mini documentaries on Jesse Sylvia. They went back to Martha's Vineyard and Ashley was there. And I still remember like, oh, I like that yeah. guy. Yep. Um, they did the same thing with Ryan Reese. Like, and then it's like, you felt um, you had like an affinity for them. Cause like, oh yeah, I like his mom. Yep. And, <laughs> but now uh, you watch the main event. Like I couldn't, I'd have to really think hard about who even won the main event last year or the year yeah. before or the year. Like, it just doesn't, it's not a, <clears throat> it just doesn't stick out in my mind. Like those names just aren't a thing like they were back in like the heyday. Yeah. Um, so. And I think we, we always talk about trying to get more women into the game and like, we want human interest stories. Yeah. It's the same way you can get me into football. You can get me into certain sports where I might not have a rooting interest in the team at all. Um, but you hear someone's like, story of how they had nothing they slept on the floor all of a sudden they came up oh they're the fastest sprinter and they can run a 40 and this and now now they make two million dollars a year playing for this team i now care and i'll watch them play and like that is a thing where make me care like it's like for i'm not a normal female i'm not thinking i'm representative of everyone i loved poker i wanted to gamble whatever but for for women who don't have that inclination towards gambling and and you know, taking risks and stuff like that, they might get into poker by learning about poker players that they like um, and rooting for them. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, now I know how the game works. Saw it on ESPN as I'm watching my favorite players. And maybe it's not so scary to buy in at a casino now that I know how the game works and how to play. That that promotion now is handled by bloggers. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really cool. We took it into our own hands. We're like, we're not going to focus on like Mattis out for the next 20 years. Um, You're going to focus on like normal players. You're playing in a casino. You're going to make yourself a name. Brad Owen made himself a name. Um, I think that's really cool. It's like there are platforms where people, if they're talented and interesting, can make a name for themselves and they don't have to rely on old school production companies telling us who to pay attention to. Yeah. And I send bloggers to like streamers in that way too. So if you see like... Ryan DePaulo's running deep. Jeff Boski's running deep. Vanessa Cade is running deep. Like people will grab, oh, oh, I know Vanessa Cade. 
I watched her stream. Like, I like her. <clears throat> um, so that's like a thing now, whereas before it'd be production companies handling that. Now, now it's just like we handle it ourselves. I think um, that's a really good point. I think that's yeah. really cool. And it will even it out as as people start. I mean, they already are obviously uh, taking their own entertainment into their own hands. Like they, they're like, I'm going to see on Twitch what I want to watch. It's not just right. flipping through channels and like, OK, ESPN and CBS are highlighting these people or Poker Go is putting this six player lineup. Um, you can choose to instead watch a smaller streamer who you think is a good coach or you think they're interesting or whatever. Like Ape Styles is on the pod last and yeah. he harnesses this massive audience um, from the ground up. He's yeah. just a really cool guy where maybe he never gets a shot with Poker Go. Maybe they don't see it. Um, maybe he doesn't make a deep run in a live tournament because he's grinding online, but he has his own audience now and you can't take that away from him because these people are choosing to watch him instead of choosing to watch the people who are featured by these production companies. And building organ organically like that is so fun. Like it's so, it's, uh, it, it's, it's such a cool thing. I can't, I can't even describe like what it feels like, but knowing like when you see like somebody's leaving you a comment or you meet someone in real life and you remember like, holy shit. Like I remember when you left me a comment like four years ago, like it's such a cool little family that you build um, that that piece is in, is invaluable too. Like, so it's not just like the family of, of vloggers and streamers and how we kind of all respect each other. It's also like the fans and how they all kind of come together. It's just like a really cool little, little package. Yeah. Happy to be. I think uh, this pod has pitched me on vlogging. I'll be starting mine tomorrow to make it sound <laughs> so wholesome and fun. And no, <laughs> it's not me, but I'm glad you do. Tell it. everybody they should. Vlog. They really yeah. should. Even if you never release it, like I'm not yeah. saying blog and then put it out on YouTube and then, you know, have like you know the curse that are following like i'm just saying you should do for something for you. yeah 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 i mean I have, look at my phone it's like 99 percent dog pictures and videos but i watch them like i look yeah. back and like the day we got buttercup and she was just this tiny like tiny ball of cute with a huge cone like <laughs> she just had her surgery and like she couldn't even hold it up she's falling like <clears throat> i love looking back on stuff like that and yeah. i wouldn't have it if not for instagram because i will just take quick stories same thing I'm not really making them for any purpose i'm just like yeah. oh it's so cute whatever and going back like several months it's like awesome like, my grandma's super sick right now it's horrible but i had uh i made her like a zoom bingo game for like yeah. my whole family from all over the place um sorry my whole family from all over the place attended it and i was looking through it the other day and i'm like this makes me feel so good like, it yeah. makes me so happy to, like, see her being loved. And without these dumb Instagram stories, I don't document stuff like that. I'm not, yeah. like, yeah, it's I, I think it's really thing. cool. It's that same feeling. Yeah, it's, it's so it's cool for your thing. daughter. Like, I think it's going to be, like, fucking awesome someday that, like, she can go through and see that you're really cool, that you, like, live yeah. this weird life and met all these people and, like, got 36,000 subscribers. It's a lot of people that are choosing to watch your stuff. It's awesome. And it's funny. I'm not even my daughter's favorite blogger. <laughs> <laughs> Does she love Nimi? No, she likes the trooper. Oh, that <laughs> yeah, is so funny. Yeah, she's, and she'll tell me right to my face, like, no, yours, yours is boring. I don't that know. is so yeah. awesome. Wow. Yeah. Of course, that's how your kid is. Look how you yeah. are. <laughs> so I, uh, she was here uh, in town. She'll be moving here in a, in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but she was here in town <clears throat> and I took her to meet the trooper. And at 11 years old, she was starstruck. And it was the cutest thing. That's I'd awesome. Ever <laughs> let you speak. Like it was it was the cutest thing ever. Um, so yeah, she's a big trooper. That's, fan. that's awesome. I have a, I have a, a, an actually a humbling experience. I was walking with Crouton down the Rio hallway. I brought him there to, they have a pet stay area mm -hmm. there and a lot of people had wanted to meet him. So I brought him, I'm walking down the hallway and some guy goes, is that Crouton? And I was like, it's Crouton. And he's petting Crouton. He's like, I've always wanted to meet him. And he keeps walking. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, I can't even be upset. That is so fucking awesome that this dude awesome. follows Crouton on Twitter and not me. <laughs> That's funny. Crouton oh, has man. his own Twitter account? He has his Twitter account, but I, I haven't been tweeting from, I mean, he hasn't been tweeting lately. Yeah. He's been busy. That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, he's got a pretty sweet Twitter account. But yeah, oh man. Anyway, I have completely derailed this pod. This was not you. That was me. <laughs> Um, but for anyone who is interested in, in watching your vlog, if you want to give them a quick rundown of how to find it, and then also recommend your favorite vlog for them. Okay. Uh, okay. how to find my ball blog, go to YouTube or Google, 
and either type in my name, Jamin Burton, or type in the Drawing Dead blog and it'll pop right up um, and be available to you. My favorite vlog um, is run by a one Mr. Andrew Nimi. No, see, you're giving more credit to other people. Nimi is awesome. I want you to tell my, us your yeah, favorite Nimi's vlog favorite that you vlog. made so that people can see the best of the best right away. So hold on, say that one more time. Your favorite vlog that you made. Like if there was one where you're like the title of the one that you're the most oh, proud of. My favorite vlog that I've made. Um <clears throat> I will tell you this. Uh, it's probably up there with one of my favorites. It was definitely the most emotional vlog that I made. Um, it was a vlog I made a month ago about um, the year 2020 um, mm -hmm. and all the trials I went through, um, which caused me to pick up and essentially move me and... Uh, uh, my family and part of my extended family out of St. Louis to Sweet and uh, moved to Vegas. It's called mm -hmm. um, The Return to Poker. Um, I had taken a like a six, seven, eight month hiatus from playing poker to 2020. And, you know, I mean, everything that went along with 2020 coronavirus, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Aubrey, you know, like that, that whole thing, all the racial tension living in St. Louis. Um, living not too far from the McCloskeys, and that was a couple that pulled the gun on all the protests, like all that stuff, um, <clears throat> all the Michael Brown bullshit in 2014, like all that just building to a head um, and me being like, it's time to get the fuck out of St. Louis and the Midwest and go live a better life. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was called The Return to Poker. Um, that's one of my favorites. And probably any vlog with um, any vlog that I did at Stone's Casino, actually in Sacramento. Um, most of them have uh, one of my favorite people, Casey Mills, in it. She's with, awesome. With uh, me and her. Her and I just act crazy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, any, any of those, anything from Stone's uh, and uh, probably the one from two weeks ago. Awesome. Thank you. And I didn't mean to cut you off while you're giving Nimi, Nimi praise because I, I love Nimi. I think he's yeah. great for Fuck poker and Nimi. is just like one of the nicest people I've met in poker. Yeah. So <laughs> I just wanted you to toot your own horn first. <laughs> um, but no, thank you so much. This has been really, really fun. Um, I really appreciate you coming on the pod. I hope people check out your vlog. Um, yours will be the one vlog I watch. Don't tell Nimi and Brad. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you so much. And uh, thank you guys for watching.